Let's take a look at some of the components of Cisco Trust Stack. So Cisco Trust Stack relies heavily on this concept of security group tags. And very much like a VLAN tag, this is an additional header that we're gonna add to an ethernet frame. And I'll show you what the frame looks like and the details that we place within it. Uh, but effectively what these group tags are gonna be used for are three things. First, classification. And that is we can look at source and destination resources and assign a group to each of them. So let's just say for instance, uh, that finance servers uh, have a security group of 10, employees have a security group of four. Okay, fair enough. Well, we've got those mappings laid out. We have to propagate them throughout the environment. So security group tags have to be propagated uh, between devices. A lot of times are things that we can set up within Cisco ICE, and then we can leverage the security group tag exchange protocol, or SXP, to propagate that data out toward various devices. And then once these tags are enforced, we can also uh, apply security group access control list or a security group firewall to our traffic based on these flows. So looking at it in a bit more detail here, uh, we've got it laid out in such a way that we've got the employees set with the security group tag of five and the managers with the security group tag of four. And you wonder, Brian, where do these group tags come from? Did you just create them out of thin air? Do you apply them manually? Can it happen dynamically? Yes to all of it. We could do a port by port or IP based configuration statically on the switch. But a lot of times what we do is we tie this into our identity services engine. And when people authenticate to the network, we can push a security group tag onto the user. So as traffic is sent from our employees into the network, on ingress, we look at the traffic and we know that it gets a security group tag of five. So we add this extra label with the five on it. That five is gonna be propagated with uh, this ethernet frame throughout the environment. And once it finally comes across to the point that it's trying to reach, in this case, an application server, we take a look at the group tag, security group tag, and this is just really on the source. Um, the destination that we compare it to, like if you think about MAC addresses, you think about IP addresses, port numbers, we've always got what I kind of think of as an envelope. And that envelope, just like envelopes in the postal service, have a source and they've got a destination, right? This security group tag is just for the source. So we give it a tag of five and that's all that it gets. There is no destination. It's not until egress, when we go to send this traffic out through a specific port, that we go, oh, wait a minute, five is trying to talk to 10. Okay, well, fair enough. Let's look at our matrix here. And what we see is that employees, or group five, they're trying to talk to an app server, which is group 10, and that would be allowed. Now, if the employee was trying to access a finance server, which is group 14, that would be denied. So they call this a security group ACL, this matrix here. The access list part of this, the actual access list entries where we say permit access to port 22, um, that's actually gonna go in this cell of the matrix, if that makes sense. So this is where our security group ACL would be applied in that conjunction. And the way that we read this is coming in, we've got our source, and then across the top here, we've got our destinations. If I created a new group, uh, let's say HR, that group would come here and my matrix would get one row and one column larger. Does that make sense? And this will happen for each group that we create. So again, when we talk about how does that tag get applied? Well, it could happen dynamically, leveraging 802.1x. We could also leverage MAC authentication bypass as well as web authentication. Now additionally, you probably have devices in your environment that aren't authenticating. A lot of times when we do our static mappings, this tends to be on servers or devices that host services, some type of appliance perhaps. And on the ethernet port that connects to that device, we can associate a security group tag. That's how we like to do it a lot of times. Alternatively, you can do it based on VLAN as well as IP host and subnet. So this is nice because a lot of us come into this having done access control list, using source and destination IPs for years, possibly decades, and that's what just seems normal. So if we've got our access list set up historically based on IP addresses, we've had good IP address management, all of our VLANs, all of our addressing 
seems very logical, the rules seem to make sense, we can apply that and carry it forward with security group tags, just leveraging our traditional IP addresses. Uh, and again, really nice that we can tie this into 802.1x. So as far as the propagation of the security group tags, uh, it can happen a couple different ways. From policy acquisition, from the authentication servers, one of them. And that's just to say when someone comes into the switch port, they authenticate to ICE, ICE can return a policy to that switch or to that wireless LAN controller, talks about this is a security group tag for the particular user. We can also just have a packet that arrives or frame uh, with that tag that's already on it. So maybe there's a switch that we're adjacent to and it was tagging traffic as it came in, so it just passed that over to us. Uh, additionally, we can specify a group tag just based on the physical port itself. We can say, if you see traffic coming in this particular port, it should get this, uh, this particular mapping. And then additionally, we've got mapping between a source IP address and a security group tag. So we say, when you see traffic coming from this IP, this is the group tag that goes along with it. And this is typically propagated using SXP, and that's our security group tag exchange protocol. So just showing how this would work, right? We've got a user, traffic is coming in. As soon as a frame came in, perhaps, um, you know, we're using the AnyConnect client, we've got a uh, Cisco metadata or CMD header here, and that CMD header can contain our SGT within it. So as soon as the traffic comes in, we go, oh, security groups, no problem. Ingress, egress, that tag is carried with it, just like we'd see in MPLS. Uh, I guess in MPLS, the tags get swapped. Here it stays the same. Uh, but again, it's the idea that we've added this extra header. Uh, it wasn't there when we started. I guess sometimes it could be uh, in, in the case of any connect. But we add this label. It follows the traffic to the destination. Once it gets to the destination, it makes a decision based on that security group ACL and then forwards the traffic towards the user without that uh, CMD frame on it. Uh, if, if we've peeled it for doing group tags. You could also be leveraging something called MACSAC, uh, 802.11ae, and that's, or 802.1ae. And MACSAC is where we're performing end-to-end -end encryption uh, between two systems. In that case, that CMD frame uh, would keep following you. So let's take a closer look at that CMD frame. Uh, with the inline security group tagging, this is gonna be carried out in what we call the Cisco TrustSec metadata header, which is a mouthful. Uh, you'll commonly see that abbreviated as CMD. So the security group tag is 16 bits, and it provides us with 64K in tag space. Uh, and that's just two to the 16th power, all of those combinations. Uh, it's basically gonna give us uh, that capability. When we take a look at MACSEC itself, MACSEC is implemented with what we call 802.1AE, this just means that it's standards-based. If I'm going from Cisco to non-Cisco devices, I can use MACSEC. And if you're not familiar with that, that's basically link-level encryption and authentication. I've seen it used in data centers where we had some uh, fibers that were coming out of the top of cabinets, uh, crossing uh, through the data center, and then dropping into another cage. And one of the things they were worried about was the security of that particular cable because it was outside of the cage. And what we're able to do is apply MACSEC on the actual switch ports. So we said all traffic that goes across this particular link, no matter what it is, spanning tree BPDUs, doesn't matter, all of it should be encrypted. And the way that we can pull it off is applying this CMD header. Now, MACSEC and metadata, um, these are gonna be compatible. So if you're using MACSEC, uh, it's gonna go along and be carried within that field. Uh, you can also use just one of these at a time. That is to say, you could use MACSEC as well as security group tags, or you could just use one or the other. All right, so looking at TrustForce, uh, TrustSec uh, enforcement here, uh, the way that we read this matrix again is the sources on the left coming in, we find the destination security group on the right, we look at the cell, and that cell is gonna indicate what our rules are. So again, the security group ACL is applied right in that junction. Uh, to look at what security group firewall would use, 
in terms of looking at this from the CLI or a command perspective. We've got accessless inside extended permit IP, and notice our source, security group tag 5, any, and then to security group tag 10, any.